Our panelists are back with us now. Mark Halpern, I'll start with you as promised here. Uh, Congressman Jim Jordan, in a nutshell, summing up, I mean, really is a small summary of what Republican lawmakers feel about the infrastructure plan. What are your thoughts on it? President Trump was very good at uniting the Democratic Party. Joe Biden's turning out to be very good at uniting the Republican Party. I haven't found any Republican voice either in Congress amongst the governors or in the um, interest groups that support the Republican Party, anyone who's supportive of this plan, not just because of the size of the package, not just because of the size of the tax increase, but a big philosophical difference that says, sure, we'd like more child care, sure, we'd like more broadband access, but we don't think as Republicans that this should come dictated from Washington. So it'll be a big debate, but if Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer are going to pass this, I don't think it's going to be with a single Republican vote. Mm, reconciliation perhaps will be used again. We'll wait and see on that. Meantime, you mentioned the taxes increase there. The Tax Foundation weighing in, tweeting this, saying President Biden's American Jobs Plan looks to increase the federal corporate tax rate to 28 percent, which would raise the U.S. federal state combined tax rate to 32.34 percent, higher than every country in the OECD, the G7, and our other major trade partners and competitors, including China. John, I'll go to you here. How do you anticipate uh, this big infrastructure bill to impact taxes? Well, uh, the president has made very clear that he intends to raise taxes on corporations, of course, much of which are eventually passed on to consumers. So all Americans will be paying higher taxes as a result of any corporate tax increases that will take place. I'm also very concerned about this sort of dodgy language about nobody earning less than $400,000 will have their taxes increased. And the question is, does he pertain to individuals or to families? If it's individuals, it's one thing. But families means that any couples that are earning $200,000 each are going to be hit with very heavy taxes in the years to come. And just one other point, if I may. His comment, the president's, that is, about making us more competitive with China, I think falls flat on its face because we're going to be accruing so much debt, trillions of dollars, without the means to pay for it, that this will cripple our ability to remain economically competitive 5, 10, 15 years out, just as China continues its assault on our economy and our foreign policy. Um, President Biden actually talked about what you're what you're saying here. The uh, the four hundred thousand dollars. If you make um, anywhere less than four hundred thousand dollars a year, you're not going to you're not going to face any increase in taxes. I know you mentioned two hundred thousand. But let's just get here's President Biden on the record about that. I start with one rule. No one. We say it again. No one making under four hundred thousand dollars. will see their federal taxes go up, period. Amy Tarkanian, there's a lot of confusion about this, this number. Explain that to us. Sure, and they're being disingenuous because then we later found out that it's going to also be 200000 possibly for me and 200000 for my spouse, which would then equal 400000 and we would fall into that tax bracket. Um, the fact is we also need to be careful with the quote-unquote so-called economists that we're listening to who are claiming that this new plan, you know, with more government spending will outweigh the costs, and they're claiming that it's going to, you know, increase the spending in retail and restaurants. Well, of course, because you know what else they're doing? Just like they did with the COVID bill that only we found out, you know, covered 9% of anything relating to COVID, this one is roughly only covering 5% having anything to do with roads and bridges, and they're dangling another carrot to the American public by wanting to recur stimulus yes. um, to, to every citizen and also extend unemployment, which that leads little incentive to go back to work. Oh. So we're also going to be finding, you know, I think fake polls showing that the American public is in favor of this um, when they don't realize gotta, that this is just a short-term fix for long-term problems. We're jumping into the next show here. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, John Sidalides, good to see you. Amy Tarkanian, always a pleasure. Mark Halpern, thank you, sir. We appreciate your time.